Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 13 through 53. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So she, he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told, had not been told them, they shall see. And that <clears throat> which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who was believed, who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had, I've got, I apologize people, I apologize. This does not change in here. I do apologize, the incorrect reading was there. That's why I started slow. I didn't look up at the top of it, you know, I just started to read and it did say, the page did say Good Friday. I'm, I just. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, <laughs> chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with water, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Today's Psalm is Psalm 118, verses one and two and 14 through 24. I will read to the asterisk and ask you to respond. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let Jerusalem now proclaim. His mercy the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. 
there is a sound of exaltation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the, so the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice. Today's second reading, the epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. I will remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I have handed on to you as first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I'm the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here with you all today. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Or some people may say Happy Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> well, the title of my message today is Jesus. Oh, you all may be seated. <laughs> so, the, the title of my message today is Jesus the greatest of all time? Who is Jesus? Oftentimes, when we think of Jesus, we, we, we see a man who is smiling, very caring, very loving, very compassionate, very forgiving. And we know of Jesus as the one who went to the cross and died for our sins. But today, I want to share the story to go even deeper about the character of Jesus. Who is Jesus? In John chapter 1, it said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. And then in John 1, verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So one thing I can say about Jesus again, he is full of grace and truth. <clears throat> so Jesus... He is God. He is the second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one. So God the Father sends his Son into the world to fulfill a great purpose. But what was his purpose? 
Why did he come here? <clears throat> In Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 19, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty to them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus read this scripture at the age of 30, just a little bit younger than I. Some of, some of us are probably thinking, hey, what, he's older than 30 now? I remember when he was a little baby. <laughs> so Jesus was 30 years old. He was about to start his public ministry. He enters into a Jewish synagogue, and he is handed the Isaiah scroll, and he reads this scripture in front of a bunch of educated Jews who understood the scriptures. And they understood that this scripture was about the Messiah, but they don't understand that he had already come and that he was the Messiah. They were still trying to figure out who was this Jesus. But Jesus came here to fulfill this amazing mission. How did he fulfill it? First of all, the spirit of the Lord was upon him, as it says in Luke 4, verse 18. Jesus, who is the Messiah, he is known as the Mashiach. The, the Hebrew word for Messiah is Mashiach, which means the anointed one. When Jesus was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist, the Bible says that the heavens opened. So just imagine this. The, the heavens opened. And the Spirit of God came upon Jesus. And the Father said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So God the Father empowers Jesus. He, he fills him with power. Jesus is like, he, he's a superhero. For some of the kids who are watching, Jesus, he, he, is, he is our ultimate superhero. But God the Father gave him power to fulfill this great mission. But why was he given this power? Why was he anointed? First of all, Jesus was anointed to teach us some valuable lessons. He taught about doing the right thing, which is repentance. He taught about forgiveness, loving one another, loving our neighbor like ourselves. And he also taught about rest. He said, come to me, you who are laden, you who have these heavy burdens of stress, and I will give you rest. And he taught about salvation. He said, for God so loved the world. He said this to, the, to uh, Nicodemus, the Pharisee. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So he was offering this salvation even before he fulfilled it at the cross. Next, God was empowered. Jesus was empowered to bring healing and to deliver people. It says in Matthew chapter, four, Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 24, it says, In the ministry of Jesus, he went throughout all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and disease among the people. And the news about him spread all over Syria. This was a surrounding area in, in Jerusalem. The news was spreading about him. And it says that all over Syria, the people brought to him all who were ill and various diseases, those who were suffering pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Jesus is the greatest of all time. He is our superhero. But why did Jesus do this? Why did he proclaim this amazing news? 
Why did he bring healing and deliverance? He did this because the world was broken. The world was a dark place, and we still see that now in our society. It's a dark place. It's a lot of evil in the world. But the reason why there's evil in this world is because of the fall. I'm, I'm going to take it back, way back, back in the time. Some of y'all saw us coming in here. But I, I want to take it back. When, when God created everything, he said it was good. He created the heavens. He created the earth. And at, and at six days, he, he created a um, man. He created Adam. He gave him a wife named Eve. And he, and he said, walk in dominion over the earth. Be tillers of the Garden of Eden. Everything was good. There was no violence. There was no evil. There was no storms or diseases and stuff that we're seeing in this world. There was no evil, but everything was good. But God told Adam a specific instruction. He said, you can enjoy everything in the garden. You can eat from every tree, but do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or you will surely die. And, and the Hebrew word for that means death twice. First of all, spiritual separation from God, just being separated from God. Secondly, the where the flesh starts to decay, where the flesh starts to get sick and, and eventually um, die. But these are all things that came from the fall. And as a result of that, all of mankind became fallen. All of mankind became broken under the curse. And Jesus saw our brokenness. And he wanted to restore it. He wanted to redeem it. That's why he came here, preaching repentance, preaching forgiveness, preaching love, because he knew there was violence in the world. He knew there was evil in the world. He knew there was sickness in the world. And he came here to heal the sick. He came here and he, he even raised the dead. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That's another um, scripture in there. But I'm just going to add that in there. Because I want to I exalt Jesus. Because that's what this is all about. So Jesus is the ultimate superhero. He is the greatest of all time. Some of us young people have heard the word goat. He is the greatest of all time. And he is alive. That's why we celebrate Easter. He's still alive. But I, I want to talk about something that Jesus did, which was so profound. Something that it just does not make any sense. God came in human. He came down here in the flesh. And he not only restored his creation, bringing healing, bringing deliverance, and, and teaching about the goodness of God, teaching us about love and forgiveness. But he wanted to break that curse. And the only way to break that curse was he had to die for our sins. <clears throat> Oftentimes, we, when, we, when we visualize that, it's, it's a very sad thing to think about Jesus dying. It's a very sad thing. Think, thinking of, I was hearing earlier in, in the scripture readings that, that he looked unrecognizable. That's how beaten he was. It's a very sad thing to think about. But Jesus died to break that curse. He was the suffering servant out of Isaiah 53, 5. And it talked about the cross there. He, he bore everything, everything that came from the fall. He took upon himself. When he was being beaten, when he was being scourged and whipped, he took all of our sins. He took all of our shame. Every, every bad thing that we've done, Jesus came here and he took every bullet for us. He stood in the gap on that cross and everything that came from the fall, he took every bullet for us, everything. Every mistake that we've made, every sin that we've committed, Jesus stood there on the cross and took it all. He took it all. He is the ultimate superhero that died for us and took our place. Like we were, we were spiritually dead because of the fall. We, we had no right to even have eternal life. We had, we had no right for forgiveness. We deserved 
uh, can I say this word? We, we deserve hell. We deserve, I don't mean it the curse word in a way, but we deserve to go there because of what we've done wrong. But Jesus came here and died on that cross so that we could be forgiven. I'm talking about a clean slate. Clean slate. Past, present, and future sins. Even sins that we're going, that we're going to mess up in the, in the future. He died for them. So that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's, that's the God that we serve. And he is still alive today. He's not dead. You, you see that cross right there? There's there, there nobody hanging on that cross. Jesus is alive. He is still forgiven our sins. He is still bringing healing. We may not see a full manifestation on this healing now, but we'll eventually see it in the world to come. But God is so good. He is so amazing that he can identify with our pain. He can identify with our suffering because he came here to earth, suffer, experience rejection from his own friends. Yet he still died for us. This is the God that we serve. Amen? In and, and, and my life, I want to share this real quick. I'm going to close here. I'm going to close right here. I put this down. I'm going to close here. Jesus is alive. And I'm a living witness. We're all witnesses. We all have a story about things that God has delivered us from. Because we wouldn't be here now. We, we went through a pandemic. We went through a pandemic. There's, we, we went through seeing all of this racism in the world, all of this evil, but the fact that we're still here today just shows the goodness, you know, the goodness of God, the grace of God. But my story is that I came to him, you know, not, not completely living for him. You know, I still make mistakes from time to time. No, none of us are perfect. But I came to him in a very broken place, and he forgave me. He redeemed me. He changed me from the inside out. I used to be this quiet kid, hardly said anything to nobody. But after I encountered God's power, and I encountered God's presence, and I decided I want to have a relationship with him, it became real to me. The resurrection power became real to me. You know, I, I was praying for a wife, and I was praying for all these things. God bless me with my wife who's here today, my, my, my baby daughter. God healed me from um, physical issues that I was dealing with. Um, I'm going to share this. Y'all are my family, so I'm going to share this. Um, I was in New York for a while, and my apartment was infested with black mold, which is very harmful to the body. I have a history of asthma. And it was triggered from that black mold. I felt like I could not breathe right at all for five years straight. Just imagine that. And I was being stubborn. I didn't want to go into oxygen either. I was being very stubborn about it. But I could not breathe right for five years. But I'm still here today. And I'm telling you, my, my lungs feel perfectly fine. I'm, I moved out of New Jersey. I moved out of there. I came back here. But my lungs are perfectly fine here today. The mental distress, the anxiety, depression, all the stuff that came from that, God has restored it. My life is a living witness to the glory of God. And he's still doing a work in me. He's still restoring. He's still reviving. I still got to take care of myself. But I share that with you all today because you all are my family. And whatever it is you are going through right now, God is able to meet you where you are. No matter what sin you may have committed, God's able to meet you where you are. And he's able to completely eradicate that. <laughs> and not count it against you because he remembers the sin no more. I mean, of course, God wants us to confess to him when we're, when we're messing up. God, help me here. That's repentance. God, help me. And, and it, may, it, it may be a long process. It may be a lifetime process. But God's grace that he, that he demonstrated on that cross was enough to wash away all of our sins. God's grace was enough to be present with us in whatever we're going through right now. He's alive, he wants to meet you where you are because he loves you. He is the greatest of all time. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is the, the Prince of Peace. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the great physician. He is the great I am that I am. And he is everything 
that we need him to be in our life. And I pray that this message blesses you today as you go forth today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6, found in your bulletin. I will read to the asterisk and re ask you to respond. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, generous, and needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop. Darlene, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. You may add your own petitions. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful Easter day. And we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask prayers for the sick, especially Ardell Anderson, Jean Boyd, Adrian Combs, Jeffrey Corbin II, K. 
Carrie Corbin, Sandra Corbin, Crystal Diggs, Regal DuBose, Samuel E. Ewell Jr., Olive Ezell, Jean Harden, Jeanette Lovett, Mark Miller, Ron Minor, Gwendolyn Newsom, Shane O'Tay, Eleanor Pritchett, Angela J. Russell, Henry P. Russell Jr., Barbara Savage, Jerome Shepard, Minnie Stiff, Cornelia Taylor, Cornelius Taylor, Vernell Walden, Wayne Walden, Barbara Ward, John Watkins Sr., and Bernice Wilson. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. You may add your own thanksgivings. Amen. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. You may add your own petitions. We pray for the de-escalation of violence and evil in the world and the people of the Holy Land, Palestine, Israel, and Ukraine. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning, my lovely church family. I am so glad to see everyone, even those who haven't been here in a while. First of all, I would like to thank Reverend Eric, who did this amazing sermon, which I was waiting for. Give him the praise. Telling us what we should be mindful of this day and what Jesus' birth and his work here on this earth was all about and that he died for our sins and that he died for the ones now in the past and those that are to come. You know, Eric, you were doing so well down there. Uh, I thought we was gonna have to do that Baptist altar call and I was gonna try and get some people to join <laughs> because you were bringing it on like that and I'm sitting there saying, okay, can I get up and do this? But no, but that's just how well I took in everything that you said, how we always take in everything you said. And you have to know that we're always proud to have you here with us, always. And yes, when you were young, the young I remember wasn't that quiet. So <laughs> it must have been later on, okay? Remember, you, you took us back, okay? You skipped a note. But thank you, sweetheart, as always. And I'd like to thank Deacon Darlene for standing in so that we could have our regular service. Give her. We look forward to that. We were missing that. Because of your being here now, we can continue to have that. And we thank you for that. OK, we have a few announcements. One I was given about the Easter. Can you stand up and, and explain it? I, I didn't get it all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Laura has some gifts for the children and for the adults, from my understanding. I see Jordan back then. <laughs> you don't forget things no matter how far you go, do you, Jordan? I'm going to still get my Easter egg. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I'd like to do is I would like to thank all the members of the church that came yesterday to help us spuce up the church and clean and thank Laura for the display of the lilies, which was an absolute, and the cross out front, and all who helped her. It was, it was, we enjoyed being together and we took our time and that's why we have a clean spot for Jesus to rise himself in today, thanks to them, <laughs> okay. Anita, did you have anything? Yeah. Oh. Earl. Earl's got Earl. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church family. Good morning. A couple of announcements. First of all, you know, I do sub in the um, Hampton Public School System, so I can assure you that Stacy has earned her award. Let's give her a hand. Um, also, while we are giving our, expressing our concerns, in places in the world that are especially tr uh, troubled by violence and evil, I would like us to add Haiti to the list of those countries 
that deserve our special prayers and concern. Um, next, I would like to remind you that um, the Aberdeen Gardens and Civic Historic and Civic Association is having its 26th annual Black History Breakfast. This is in April the 30th of this year, and many of our con uh, members of our congregation do come from the Aberdeen area. Um, I will be posting a flyer on the bulletin board. Um, you can call Yvette Jones, who is, uh, there's a num her number's on there. She's the new president of the Aberdeen Garden Civic Historic and Civic Association. So hopefully, um, you can get your money in by the 10th of April, and let's support this worthy organization. Thank you, and have a happy Easter, and Crystal, you know I want to get your picture. <laughs> <laughs>